yeah. I, I feel God is a chilled guy with belly, has a nice goatee, just roaming around, probably on his scooter or something, no form of stress, sipping a good drink, maybe wine. Boom. Uh, new episode today, featuring my boy Shay. Hope you like this one. Let's get August. I'm launching a training app. Really? Yeah, so I've been working on that. Oh, like I was, rec- so people I was just subscribe and you know, and you're gonna make it like a monthly thing or yeah, yeah, because that that's the best, you know. There's a saying in business like when you, if you can sort of scale up your business in such a way that it doesn't matter on you as an individual utilizing your time, then it works. Because literally, like I was sitting here scratching my brain and I was like, for instance, today, uh, you're the last person out of seven. Mm-hmm. But during like the main lockdown, I was training like at one point ten people a day. But it's because a lot of people have gone back to work now. It's gone down to like seven, six a day. But at one point, I did four months straight at that rate, plus Sundays, mm-hmm. still training people, and I was tired. So in my head, I was like, how could I scale up mm-hmm. and reach more people? Bro, the app makes yeah. sense. You know, because if you think about it. What then happens is your space is controlled. You can still be doing whatever. People have the plan. And then they just, especially that subscription model, yeah. it does work. You know, you just pay your monthly subscription or whatever. And the, and the great thing as well that I've figured is, especially with training people, mm-hmm. now I know that even if you're not with me, mm. I've got track of what you did. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and have, oh yeah, and that's another important thing, data. Because yeah. data is the wealth, yeah. it is money nowadays, yeah. you know? So like you have the trends, you know what their what people's patterns are like in terms of their eating habits yeah. you know places they even go you know you can actually monetize that so if you ever decide you need investors or whatever yeah. to let's say super scale the app yeah. or whatever yeah. you got the content and yeah. that's pretty yeah. pretty key yeah. that's interesting man yeah. so yeah we, we've, been, we've been working just recording all the exercises we need to add sometimes it's tiring like yesterday we were recording really? oh, i was suffering <laughs> <laughs> it was hot I was getting from one crazy. to two to three to I did like over oh, fifty exercises yesterday. You really thought this thing through, oh, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Most people I see they, they do the same method, but they send out PDFs. Okay, so I'm like, yeah. people don't want to be opening a PDF. Or, yeah. Go from page to page to page mm-hmm. to page. It's good, but as we're going into the future, you want that easy accessibility where simplicity, yeah. People are lazy. There's something we actually say. Yeah. Nobody has time for extra wahala. If you can that's why people like iPhones. Yeah. It's just there, yeah. you know? Yeah. And these times, yeah. It figures like Samsung, the camera is way yeah. better. Yeah. Well yeah. Yeah. yeah Samsung true. cameras are way better than iPhones. So but <laughs> we're we've got we're hooked onto iPhone. Sometimes mm-hmm. yeah, I look at my phone and be like, I've had an iPhone from two thousand and eight when it came out. Wow. I've just been going iPhone, 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 iPhone changes iPhone, iPhone. software wise, you know, and that, that's that's why it even works for them. Then when I'm out it's with interesting. Hakeem and then I'll be mm-hmm. like, oh, take a picture of your Samsung, <laughs> send it to me. But the new iPhone, the, the camera quality. is sick though. No, the camera is sick. Yeah, the new iPhone, I must say, when, I was really it impressed. On the Samsung, it seems yeah. like every time iPhone upgrades the camera, <laughs> Samsung looks at it and be like, we do better. Yeah. iPhone has got the, the market, it's like mm-hmm. they've got us on hold like zombies they do they yeah. apple their marketing strategy is yeah. insane yeah. you know like that's what i so like i use them a lot for case studies in business as well yeah. apple will sell anything to you yeah. i mean look at their airports they made more money than netflix yeah isn't that crazy it's crazy <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you lost, know? I lost my airports like there a week ago i don't there even know go. where it is yeah yeah a week ago and i, I know those things are not cheap airports are. yeah the airport pros are like what 250 that's all really that's what they charge yeah. i'm mad like though. how i knew i was an apple fiend yeah airpods apple cables. watch uh yeah. you now need iPad. <laughs> iphone yeah. ipad yeah. yeah the only thing i ain't got is a macbook i'm oh, sweating already well. man <laughs> i still don't know what i'm doing <laughs> this is clearly a, an issue because I, I hate working out you don't understand uh, i hate gymming i hate the today, thing <laughs> today's foundations i started how to build a house <laughs> really even this bar on his own looks heavy, man. It's not enough to do that. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, God. Jesus. <laughs> do I really need to do this? Put the so left leg side forward, so stay stay inside of this. Like, yeah. Where? Yeah. Then Let's I go. go down. Yep. Good. Keep your heels on the floor. One you side. know, I already have like freaking 40 kg in my belly, man. <laughs> <laughs> One more. That's the pace. 10. Yep. Like it. 
So is this what people do? Well, a lot of kids. Huh? They, they put like plenty weight on and they are squatting. I squat uh, about 240. 240, that's like me. <laughs> Why? Why would you? <laughs> you don't know, you know that, trust me. <laughs> Take your turn and sit down and recover. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> with business, yeah. tell everyone what you do, man. Because this guy is busy, 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 busy. <laughs> One day, Shay will be here, like, next minute, boom, teleport. He's in Nigeria. He's between here and Nigeria. Yeah. Just, what, 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 what I, okay, I'm still trying to catch my breath. The squats, man. <laughs> um, so, what I say is, I say I'm a glorified hustler. And the reason is because I'm actually faced with all these, you know, Western, um, how do I, entrepreneurs or businessmen and whatnot. So I just say a glorified hustler because it's simply I'm a consultant. Um, I own a number of businesses and entrepreneur. Um, Oakley's Group, which is a strategy and transformation company. We've done a lot in the energy space and utility yeah. space for yeah. companies in the UK, well, globally actually. Um, also, um, I don't know for high end luxury goods and services business. You know, sorry, I'm still catching my breath. Um, you know, dealing property stuff as well. So, um, Liz Kiru, Architects, Design and Build, dot com. Um, Fanbees, I think you're familiar with that one as well, which is a social media app. Yeah. You know, and different bits and bobs. But this year, you know, my focus is on developing opportunities in Nigeria for a number of reasons. One of them is um, the pound to Naira rate is, is, is yeah. to our advantage, right? Yeah. You know, so like hopefully by the end of this year, it's going to be like a thousand naira to one pound. One pound yeah. You know, so it's yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. You Ten know? years ago it was what? It was 240 yeah, or something like that. Yeah. 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 And it's four times that now. So yeah. imagine if you actually had a house, or you invested in a house in Nigeria, then you've literally depreciated. Your asset has literally depreciated yeah. by yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. So one of the things I'm trying to do is get a lot of Nigerians to have access to saving funds here. Yeah. And then that way, if the pound reaches a thousand pounds, they've appreciated they by appreciate 300, yeah. Yeah. you know, sort yeah. of Naira, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, it's also a good time for us here to invest in different things over there yeah. as well, you know, to be property. So like, um, we have a farm which I'm looking to scale up um, in Lagos, actually. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk to someone the other day about getting farmland, but in Ogun. Ogun, so yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I, I had land originally in, uh, in uh, Ikorodu. Okay. But, uh, I decided to get rid of it, oh, but yeah. I decided like this Christmas I'm going to go back mm -hmm. and look at Ogun because I Ogun. can imagine it's a lot cheaper in Ogun. It's a lot cheaper. You yeah. you'll get you get a lot of land, and I even know some people that are trying to sell, and I've told them not to. Yeah. But even if you don't, if you get like a couple of acres or whatever, yeah. it's worth it because you know land only appreciates, and it's 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 not, not like an infinite sort of resource. Yeah. You know, eventually it would run out, so it would eventually get developed one way or the other. That's what I, that's what I keep on thinking. I keep on thinking over the next ten years, mm -hmm. Lagos is going to spill over into Ogun. It will, yeah. Yeah. And with the Lagos so is overpopulated. It is overpopulated. Yeah. yeah. That's why they have the free trade zone. Yeah. So where where we actually have so we have cattle. They're not really like yeah. it's livestock. Yeah. You know, um, it's near the refinery. Yeah. So it's the other side of Lekki. Lekki. You know, yeah. where there's a lot going on. So like the free trade zone is being developed there. Mm -hmm. There's an airport coming up. There's a port yeah. coming up. So what's going to happen is you have the Ikeja side for the airport. Yeah. You know, we're going to have another airport at that yeah. other axis. Yeah. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of people sort of confined to that area. Yeah. You know, so it's definitely going to blow eventually. And that's even closer to Ibadan and whatnot. So yeah. people that want to go to like Ibadan, Ogun and the rest, yeah. they can just yeah. use that you airport, that you know? Yeah. 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 So there's going to be a lot of jobs there. People who need housing. Yeah. You know, so like people, people, a lot of properties are even like I saw one the other day going for like 18 million, yeah. 20 million penthouse style type yeah. houses. Yeah. And if you think about it, for those of us here in pounds, it's not as much, you know. Yeah. And you, you know, yeah, now. yeah, you yeah. know, and you own the house outright. Yeah. There's no, you know, mortgage. Yeah. And in the next 10 years, yeah. you know, at least you can just be. I mean, it's not like England where you're making stupid cash, but yeah. at least you know for that price, it would most likely go up. Yeah. you know to at least triple or you know, four or five times that yeah. you know and, and that's the beauty with the types of investment you go for from a land perspective in nigeria mm -hmm. now if you're buying properties and the rest in the likes of equi vi you know you're spending a lot, you of, money, a lot of money you yeah. know so you wouldn't really see it appreciate per yeah. se yeah. you know but if you go to the outskirts that's the best yeah. you know so like this this land when we got it i think it was i think two hundred and fifty thousand naira and then now it's like a plot yeah, yeah. a plot now is going for like 10 million you know but that's going back a couple of years yeah. you know so that's the thing just go outskirts yeah. you know avoid yeah. the 
hype, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it really does depend on the intentions, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, so yeah, I went back to Nigeria. Um, I've been there twice already this year. Um, looking to kick off a number of things. Yeah. So um, they, so so oil Oklahoma's group is like an energy and utilities. Yeah focused company yeah. you know those are the sectors we typically target yeah. looking to kick off a number of things in nigeria so i was i am one of the founders and the vice president of the lagos oil club yeah. you know which was just a movement where we used to bring a lot of the experts and the industry sort of professionals to discuss industry issues yeah. you know it's more like a knowledge base forum you know so we brought a number of them together to just discuss what the problems are within their industries and see how we can support and just share ideas more like a networking thing yeah you know so that was pretty successful but um, so i told you i told you about uh, my uncle and uh yes, yeah I, I, need, I need to make that happen next time yeah, if there's a time we're both out there yeah, i'll make the introduction that would be yeah. nice please yeah man. i'll definitely make that introduction yeah because that's, that's i just remember now you said so yeah. it's clicked that's his field yeah, yeah. so all, all the oil i guess yeah only yeah. oil and that yeah so you're chairman so mm -hmm. if i could make that connection there please do yeah yeah, yeah. you know because that's what we've done so like now even like services with you know providing services and just trying to kick things off because i've been so focused on england and like anybody you get so comfortable here you know you forget, don't get me wrong it's it's lovely here you know but then again that's home um it's a developing nation anyhow we look at it the likes i mean the way i put it in simple terms is where else can tesco go you know it's africa yeah. <laughs> you know they have to expand yeah. beyond yeah. the uk because it's yeah you know yeah. or where does yeah. all these high-end brands that's why you have them all opening up in nigeria or in africa you know yeah. i know nigeria is to be quite frankly is a disaster at the yeah. minute but look at ghana twitter's head office is now going to be in ghana yeah. You know, look at like the fact Twitter was even shut down in Nigeria. You saw how much Nigeria has lost in oh, the millions. You know, crazy. so it says a lot. A lot you know, use Twitter out there to promote. Yeah, to promote. Like Twitter is huge in Nigeria. Yeah. Like it's really, really huge. I think it's a lot bigger over there than here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah. It, it's amazing, like the the youth and how their access to internet it, it it's madness yeah you know that's where mtn made their money yeah <laughs> you know yeah, yeah you yeah. know yeah. I always, always think to myself you ever started mtn they have killed it yeah because <laughs> literally every time i go to nigeria mm -hmm. i'm always buying a new chip yeah and i think to myself mm -hmm. the amount of people are oh, recharge cards recharge i'm like true and they're running through data for it our goes, space uh, you know that's it the thing i don't quickly. know i don't know how the nigerian data works but yeah. it's madness it, it doesn't last it, it doesn't yeah. last yeah. no yeah. so i don't know if it's i, I don't know what it is yeah. man but, and, and you can't shout you just have to if you like don't buy that's your business yeah, that's you know nobody cares yeah. yeah yeah you and uh, michael made me laugh Really? <laughs> the what? trainers. You know, Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> My, Michael will be trained with LV trainers. I'm like, yeah. I'm no, like, these ones are meant to be running shoes. That's I know. But I laugh because both of them are the same. They were yeah. Like, designer. Yeah. 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 The, the casual trainers is designer. <sighs> One more. Ten. Good. And rapid. <sighs> what made you decide to train? Okay, so. Yeah. Obviously. Before I went to Nigeria this time, because I was there for a month. Yeah. You know, I thought, you know. So the truth is, I love how I look. Yeah. And I'm not even forced. Like <laughs> people will be like, oh, look fit. Like I think I'm so freaking sexy and <laughs> stunning and <laughs> like no jokes. I, I, I know, literally. <laughs> Like the blueprint of uncle, like <laughs> this is what a Nigerian uncle. You know when when babes are like, ah, oh, yeah, I need to be an uncle. The she. I don't know, bro. I I'm so proud. So like, even the fact I'm working out, I still want to maintain my belly. Yeah? <laughs> you know, I don't mind getting toned or whatever. And but this this is the signature. You know. So yeah. It's the signature. <laughs> you remind me of uh, like American girls. I know when 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 you talk to them, they're like, ah. Oh. Yeah, we like a man with big arms, big chest, but he needs a belly. I'm like, right. Yeah, it's like, the future. I say I have a godly body, man. That's how I look at him. You know? <laughs> so, Chiso, let me ask you. What do you think God looks like? Do you think God has... No! <laughs> no! Do you know, uh, creating... So, imagine you spent all your life creating the earth and creating all this land. Mm -hmm. You think you'll be sh you will not be in the greatest shape He's ever? Not, he doesn't... He, he, so like you know, he, Bro, he was sweating. his workout is not even it, no effort. He didn't gym. He didn't stress God himself. He just commanded. You know, packs, ten this way, yeah, ten I, I feel God is a chilled guy with belly, has a nice goatee, just roaming around, probably on his scooter or something. No form of stress. Sipping a good drink, maybe wine. You know, <laughs> I said let me get into gym and I just. I had a friend that actually pushed me, not pushed me, but mentioned it, and I kind of like the idea. Yeah. You know, and I just thought, you know what. 
in Nigeria it's a lot straightforward you know you can drive there you can be driven to the gym you know you have these guys who are all ready to train you yeah and I was like you know what let me give it a shout and then it was nice you know and then I, for some reason strange enough I'm thinking okay because I'll soon be 40 in a few years time yeah. so it's not even close <laughs> but I'm thinking that let, let me try this out a new look like you know <laughs> he doesn't want to drop the age <laughs> you know so I'm like, let, let, let me look different for a bit you know and everybody's always, so I'm thinking I'll just just tone up a little you know have the muscles and see what happens you know yeah trust you, you see the funny thing now you say ah oh, the, the, the belly is godly the moment he gets a little arms, a little chest, he'll be like, ah, oh, let me start trying to train so, yeah, and, 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 and lose a bit of the belly. And you know, God knows why he made me like, because if I had you guys' body, I will never wear a shirt. <laughs> I would roam the streets without my top. Like every, and you, you know, those very short shorts guys wear, showing off everything, man. So that's why that and singing, if I could sing and if I had the body, boy, I'll be a proper nuisance. <laughs> Misbehaving, yeah? I swear. Chiso, are you sure this is a good idea? Yeah, this is a great idea. Let's go. This is like 20 it's, kg, man. It's first word. Remember, this is like 40 kg. Now no, don't worry. 40 plus 40. This is 40 plus 40. Chiso, I'm not doing this for fun. I'm not competing for any medals. I already had a bone crack. <laughs> Like my collab run, I never knew that she could crack. Alright, cool. Let's you, go. You'd really probably have to lift me up. No, tell me. And again. this is on camera, God. Ten again. If you ten, die, you, die. you got this. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> said you're actually tough. You're, you're actually correct. <laughs> Chiso, are you sure? You don't have five pages. <sighs> nice and easy. Let's go. Come on. Damn. Let's now go. I respect people like Tunde already. <laughs> To, to, today is a machine. Let's bro, go. You know my brain. So my body wants to, but my brain is nah, like, you no, got bro. this. Don't panic. Okay. It don't feel much difference to what it was. Trust me. When yeah. you go down and do the first one, you see. Okay. Let's go. Yep. One. Good. Do you know the funny thing when you walk this out? This guy enjoys yeah. life. You, know, <laughs> you start feeling like, <laughs> like I feel hench. <laughs> if I sit here now, let's let's stop and sip some douce. I don't mind. <laughs> 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 He enjoys, bro. Full enjoyment. So, uh, <laughs> when you were younger, where did you go back to Nigeria? I was actually born in Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. yeah, I'm a local champion. I, I, <laughs> like, bro, fresh off the boat to the core, full so, shebang. What made you move back here? Because you're, you're what? Your grandma lived here. So yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I mean, it's camera, but I'll be honest, so that yeah. people feel like they can. I left there for greener pastures as well. Yeah. And education, yeah. you know. So I finished my secondary school, and three of us moved over. Where was that part of London that I landed? Because if I drop you, I feel like I'm a cool guy. Um, <laughs> UB5, <laughs> Oxbridge, like around all them. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, Oxbridge, and yeah. yeah. So that's. So yeah. guys, that's where I was actually. <laughs> that's where my London shit started. That's a cool part of town, no? No. No, really. I thought it's like the hoodest, like. <laughs> no. no? <laughs> okay, scratch that. Don't put that <laughs> camera. <laughs> we all moved over to Canterbury, man. This is the part that really shouldn't go in camera because I'm a Canterbury boy, <laughs> you know. So yeah, moved over there, yeah. and that's when the hustle started. Yeah. You know, worked in Asda. Yeah. I was security as well. I don't know if you ever knew. I used to do bouncer. Yeah. You know, I used to play American football, so I used to feel big, but you know, and then that's when I started my first business. Yeah. Um, Canterbury Nights, which was a nightlife thing. Yeah. You know, so we're actually the biggest nightlife in Kent. Yeah. And then, um, um, what was the other one? Canterbury Nights, then Oakless Group, well, Oakless Enterprise at the time, yeah. which was an IT company. So I used to do websites and yeah. um, e commerce. I was one of the first to sell PlayStation portables and shit like that. Yeah. You know, so rather than going for my year in industry, I did that and I was going to drop out of uni, but yeah. my mom wasn't having it. Yeah. You know, cool. typical Nigerian. Yeah. You know? um, so yeah, stayed through and yeah, that, that's basically the journey. So yeah, left Nigeria, I think in 2002. Okay. Yeah, so that's when I came into... 96. In 96? Yeah. So we're not that far apart. How come your accent has changed? Because mine, I have tried. <laughs> if I try sounding British, it's so messed up. I don't know how to... I remember I grew up in Brixton. And there was hardly, like, my group of friends was a mix between Nigerian and West Indian. Ah, so I mostly okay. grew up like most of my, my circle, inner circles, either you're Nigerian or you're Jamaican. Oh, you're Jamaican, yeah. makes sense. So all my friends who came at the same year mm -hmm. that grew up in Peckham still got their accents. Really? Yeah. They still okay, sound the same. Still yeah. Because it was literally as they landed, they landed in Lagos, part two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like <laughs> and, Lagos. And everyone awesome. around them was Nigerian. So 
it was hard if you're if you're still hanging yeah if you're still hanging in the same circle all the time yeah it's harder for it to go but by the time uh i think it was 99 I came back to school and my accent faded. I was like, what? Like, I was baffled. I didn't even realize. Like you just yeah, it's just literally one long summer <laughs> from, just... yeah, from May till September, it just started mm-hmm. to drop out. So by the time That's I finished school in 2001, it was gone. Kekwano. Odima. I was still a village boy. You know I'm mixed. With what? Igbo, Yoruba. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I call myself a full Nigerian because, yeah. and even a freaking, Full Nigerian, actually, in the deep sense of it, like even going back to when they colonized us. Yeah. Um, so, because my grandmother is British, white British, yeah. you know. Yeah, I've seen you. Um, so, mixed British. Um, yeah. Then my mom's Igbo, British. Yeah. yeah. And my dad's Yoruba Sierra Leonean, actually. Okay. Yeah. And then I was born in Jos, which is the northern part of yeah. Nigeria. So, that's why I sound like a full Nigerian, because yeah. I have the yeah. three major tribes yeah. and then I have the British side okay. as well. Does your mom speak Igbo? He very well, man. Oh, Real no. Onicha, babe. Hey. It's crazy, man. Like, <laughs> I swear, that one is deep, man. It's been like that, so I've been here for a while. Um, then I finished all my academics. Yeah. Um, I have a number of degrees, um, and I don't think that really makes any difference. If you if you have the bandwidth for it, do it. If not, don't do it. You like, know? like you said at the beginning, you said you're, you're a hustler. And this is the thing with uh, us being Nigerian. Our parents push degree, degree, degree. Mm-hmm. But most of us who have the entrepreneurial mindset, mm-hmm. Our degrees that end up being yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. Like so you're you're spot on. Yeah. So like myself, I, my first degree was computer systems engineering. Mm-hmm. I did not read the syllabus. I had no yeah. idea what I was going to do. Yeah. What mattered to me was I'm making my father proud. And there are many people in that yeah. boat as well. Yeah. You know, I didn't enjoy the degree yeah. for a number of reasons, but I did it and I for it's him. Take you're happy, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, what I enjoyed doing was the hustling side. Yeah. You know, marketing and yeah. sales and knowing how to yeah. promote whatever it is I try to do so that's why I now did a master's in marketing yeah you know then obviously oil and gas came up and it yeah. was a buzz so that's why I now did an MBA in oil and gas management yeah. you know um and yeah so I, I tell people it's a good to have yeah. but it's not necessary I think I think society makes it look like so the way I look at all these things I mean I can I mean it might sound funny me saying it because I have them but I think what matters really is you believing in yourself to achieve what it is you're trying yeah. to do rather than if I have this qualification I can get to the next level mm-hmm. and I think that's where it's false because if yeah. you now don't get there it affects you psychologically yeah. and you now think you're a loser so and so on like, and so it, forth especially as you say that we know so many people like from back home who move here they would get degrees and still they might have like two degrees and they still don't get the job they mm-hmm. want or like there's times where I've met like some aunties that I know and I'll be like oh what do you do? Then it'll be like, uh, I work as blah, blah, blah in this shop. Mm-hmm. Then I'm like, you're more educated than... Than the managers and yep. You're more educated than me. Mm-hmm. But it's because they feel like the moment they get that degree, like things are going to be promised mm-hmm. to them. But I'm like, it's not that easy. It, yeah, it's not the case. Yeah. Your, your network, your network, your network your, is key. Yeah. yeah. How you package yeah. yourself, how you yeah. present yourself. I mean, I'm guilty of it because like mm-hmm. myself, I even there's a time I was applying for jobs when I was not getting any contracts with the IOCs and whatnot yeah. and I was getting rejected and I was wondering yeah. you know and it starts messing your head up but it just goes to say that there's a lot more to it than yeah. you know just having the qualifications yeah. you know it's really and what I tell people is take time and this is where I think our parents in Africa don't really teach us take time out to really discover what you're about you know like who are you like what is it about you you know whatever it is your passion is it would somehow lie but at the same time you know i mean we do this whole mentorship thing where we tell people be cautious about passion you know it's yeah. good to have passion but also how can you monetize certain things because yeah. you have to eat right exactly you know passion basically what we say is passion is not good enough like, you know I you have the passion but twice so originally when i went uni the first time i didn't really want to go uni that time so i dropped out mm. the second time when i went back to uni i didn't tell no one so when i'd finished my degree i told my mom mm. and she was shocked like i told her a year <laughs> after oh wow so she was like, why didn't you mention that? I said, I said to her, I did my degree one, because I just felt like at the time I needed to occupy my time and learn more mm. in depth in regards to training. So I did a sport and exercise science degree. Mm. And at the time as well too, when I decided to go back to uni, I was going through a lot. So it was a thing at the time, uni helped me stop overthinking. But when I got halfway through, I started to know where my mind was mm-hmm. and where I was looking to go over the next one year, two years, five and ten. Mm-hmm. But 
by then I was already like nearly at the end of the second year so I was like I can't drop out again yeah. so I was literally just ride it out and finish so when I told my mum a year after I finished she was like oh so what happened with graduation I was like I didn't go she said why not I said I didn't really care for the accolades and the praises and yeah. blah 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 then she was like but I would have loved to tell people I said yeah that's my problem with it yeah. uh, you lot love to brag too much mm -hmm. and I said to her, I'm a person that I might get to where I need to get to mm. and when I get there you would have no clue mm. you know what I mean because mm -hmm. I just rather just keep it to myself yeah but she let's say like from young mm -hmm. I remember like in in school in Nigeria every year I'll get a double promotion she'll yeah. hold me back to stay in my age group but she'll phone everyone ah Chisa just got a double promotion again I'm just there looking I'm like you just held me back a year <laughs> And the reason why I used to always get double promotions was mm -hmm. I didn't like school. Yeah. So I made sure I was good in school to try and get through school faster. faster. But she would always hold me back in my in my year group and the teachers would be like, but his mind is way advanced to his age. Mm. So after a while, I remember when I moved to England, year seven I was doing good, year eight I was doing good. By year nine, I started to dwindle a bit. Mm. And my auntie was like, why? And I was like, I don't like school, one. Mm -hmm. Two, I don't feel challenged. Yeah, I know so I just stopped from. caring and I, and I said, three, I felt like I was being forced to always study, study, study. Mm. So I'm like, I'm a person, when you, you're trying to tell me, go left, uh, I want to go right. Yeah. So if, you, if I feel like you're trying to control me, mm -hmm. it has the opposite effect on me. So that's, that's why I had true. to go uni mm -hmm. and study by myself and kind of get into my zone by myself so that's interesting after i finished uni now mm -hmm. i was like mm, did i really need to go uni no but what i learned from uni was one thing the value of my time mm. one and how to manage my time very well because i realized Impressive. if you can stay in uni the whole day even when you don't want to mm. when it's something you want to do you could do it the whole day because you know that it's going to pay 